part that's getting overlooked, I think, with this whole Brian Reynolds thing is that he's kind of worth it. You know, good morning to you. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. Pirates 4, Red Sox 1 last night in Boston. All Reynolds contributed to the cause was his fourth home run in three games, a double, and an RBI single for an insurance run. Slacking, I know. Nervous, undoubtedly, about the ongoing, apparently anyway, negotiation with the team toward a multi-year extension. By every account, the two sides have agreed to money terms, and that is that it would be an eight-year, $104 million contract. By far the biggest in franchise history, but also well down from Reynolds and CAA's initial proposal that would pay Reynolds $30 million more. Now, you can say what you want about CAA for coming in after the money had been settled and saying, well, we also want to have an opt-out clause. To me, that's shaky. Uh, That's who they are. They have a reputation for not being honest and fair in their dealings. Okay, fine. I can see that, I can accept that, and I can understand why the Pirates would be put off by that. I can understand that face that Ben Charrington made when he was beat red, walking past me on his way into the visiting clubhouse in Cincinnati last Friday. It was right in that time frame that all of this had come to pass, and I'm convinced it's not a coincidence that he looked like that. And I'll say it again. I totally, totally, totally grasp where he'd be coming from. If I were him, I'd want nothing to do with these people ever again. Not with any client, no matter who it is, except this one. Because this isn't about how Ben feels. This isn't about how anyone associated with the Pirates feels. And for that matter, it's not about whether or not CAA gets to claim some kind of big triumph in the agent's community. And boy, do they love that kind of stuff. I don't mean CAA. I mean all agents. Everybody after a contract wants to hear what everyone else in that world had to say. Ooh, can you believe what they got for this guy? Or boy, did they ever get hosed or whatever. It's not about that. It's about doing the right thing for the team. And yes, in this event, doing the right thing for the player. Because Reynolds genuinely wants to stay. He wouldn't be doing any of this, and he sure wouldn't have come a full $30 million off the original price. Although he was going to come down, it didn't have to be $30 million, if he didn't want to stay. Because Even if you presume that the whole thing was just a ploy to get the opt-out clause thrown in, he still put it on the table. They still put it on the table. And all the Pirates had to do was say yes, and he's here with the Pirates for the next eight years, essentially for the remainder of his career. So he does mean it when he says it, as I've been telling you now for more than a year. As for what's best for the team, don't overthink it. This is a cornerstone player. I don't know if he's going to be the best player on the team two, three years from now. We'll see what happens when some of these upper crust prospects make it. We'll see what happens when Andy Rodriguez and Henry Davis and Nick Gonzalez and, you know, even the guys who are further down the line like Termar Johnson and who knows what's going to happen with the number one overall pick. If the Pirates do the right thing and take Dylan Cruz, who's having a historic year at LSU, and he makes it to PNC Park sooner than most people would expect, Reynolds might be just like a guy that's somewhere in the middle of the pack, but but he's worth it. He's worth the original price. I can make a sound argument right here. Right now, that Reynolds is worth the eight-year, $134 million original price. 
Because if you break that down year by year, even while accepting that there's going to be a natural decline as he gets older and you're going to be paying some Joey Votto years at some stage of that deal, he's worth it. He's worth it. The dude can play ball. Listen to Derek Shelton after Reynolds' latest explosion last night at Fenway Park. Yeah, he's in a spot right now. We're seeing the ball pretty good, and uh, just we need to keep him in that tree. And now listen to Reynolds out in the clubhouse. No, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I talk about it, it feels different. Um, dug out, um, locked through everything. Um, you know, we got a lot of, a lot of good young you know, talent that's helping us walk out through that. That's what we need. Really, so uh, it's, a, it's really a start for You don't blow this. You just don't. You don't even take the field for the home opener on Friday without getting this done. And I know, I'm sure everybody involved is tired of the artificial deadlines and everything else here, but this one's different because this is the one where you're going to be walking out onto that field facing the city of Pittsburgh, which probably is even more ready to embrace this team then the Pirates themselves recognize, and you don't leave them any kind of lingering doubt. You tell them, listen, man, we're here. We're in, okay? You wanted guys signed for the long run. You wanted us to commit to them. You wanted them to commit to us. We did Kebrian Hayes last year. We did Reynolds this year. We brought Andrew McCutcheon back. We added some players through free agency. Let's go. Let's go. Let's skip past all the BS and let's just go. Let's beat the White Sox today and let's have a fun summer here. Get it done. Get it done. He's worth it. When we come back, J1Q. This segment's brought to you by Family Table. Mom-inspired, chef-prepared meals delivered straight to your door. No prep, no mess, just reheat, which gives you more time for your family or hobbies or going to the gym or whatever. Go to FamilyTablePGH.com. Use the code DK20 for 20% off and free delivery on your first order. Order by noon Thursday for Monday delivery. Family Table bringing families back to the dinner table. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Today's J1Q comes from Ryan Porter, who says, What kind of ceiling does a player like G1 Bay have? Uh, His ceiling apparently is higher at least... (laughs) <laughs> the green monster. My goodness. What a catch. What an effort. But more than anything, honestly, beyond the, the leap, which he took without really that much of a running start, if you pick it apart, which I have, it's the confidence. What are you doing? What are you even thinking? Going after that ball there. Uh, that was... Ben Gamble level brashness, but combined with like, I don't know, Bo Jackson athleticism, I I don't really have a great parallel for that because it was so freakish in its appearance. Uh, I knew that he was fast. I knew that he was smart. I knew that he had more to his swing than being some kind of slap guy. And he showed that with the way he went oppo over the monster for his first big league home run earlier in the same game. But I didn't know that. I really didn't. And I could sit here and and crow to you, Ryan, about how, oh, he was my pick to click in the spring. And I guess I just kind of did it again. But he was for those other reasons, not for this. I didn't know this was in play. 
And I don't know if that's just a once in a lifetime event for him or if that's something that he can do on some kind of regular basis as a center fielder or even as a corner outfielder. And I say even only because, you know, those positions appear to be taken. Looking at the lineup and the lineup's needs, the hole there would appear to be at second base until you either figure out Rodolfo Castro or send him back to the minors. But if you can do that in the outfield, that's a whole nother world. So I don't know what his ceiling is. I really don't. I thought I did. I mean, I thought I at least had a a grip on it because I feel that he is a player, and he and I have had this conversation, who's built for 2023. Now, he talked to me about it at length in Bradenton this spring, where he said that he went over each one of these new rules and said, this one, this will help me this way, this one, this will help me that way. I expect to be getting hits up the middle again. What do you know, in his very first game, had a hit up the middle. You know, I expect to be getting steals, not just second base, but also third. What do you know? He did that as well already. And I, this is really the tiniest possible sample size, so feel free to totally disregard what I'm about to say. But I wasn't crazy about his defensive work in the infield. He looked like he was still something of a project there. But that last night? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? I appreciate the question. I'm afraid I don't have a ceiling for you. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. Let's do another one of these tomorrow. 